Christmas is my favorite time of the year, mainly because, at least for my family, it's a time to relax, enjoy a big Christmas lunch in the sunshine, and spend time with the people that are most important to us. Every family has their traditions, Ours is to spend the morning of Christmas Day in the kitchen getting annoyed at each other as we battle over who's using the oven for their contribution to the Christmas spread next. But last year I realised traditions have to start somewhere and proposed a new one. Christmas lights. I know putting up Christmas lights is not a new concept, it's been done by people all over the world for decades, including my family. But when I say Christmas lights, I mean Christmas lights. It all started when I saw this video. These guys have tens of thousands of individually addressable pixels, all synced up to music and even fireworks. Naturally, when I saw this, I needed to know how they're doing it. This led me down a rabbit hole of an entire hobby and industry I didn't really know existed. After spending nearly two weeks reading about everything I could, I decided I needed to try this. Only I didn't have a house. Fortunately, my old man was nearly as excited as I was about the prospect of adorning a home with thousands of RGB pixels, so he volunteered my childhood home. We used these, which are called seed pixels. They're addressable LEDs that are in a string. They're weatherproof, lightweight, affordable, and they're super bright. They have a power, data, and ground wire, and our lighting controller sends messages down the data line to tell any LED in the string what color and brightness to be. We use software called Xlights to program the show to music, and then use Falcon Player to send data to control boards that then interpret the instructions and send it down the pixel string to the right pixels. Simple. I'm not going to dive too deep into some of the deeper technical aspects of these light shows. It would make these videos hours long and certainly bore you to death. Instead, if you're interested, dive down that rabbit hole and have a look around yourself. Our first year of lights was pretty modest, but we learned a lot and really enjoyed putting it all together and loved seeing the local community come and enjoy the show. Last year's show had a few thousand pixels. This year, with the help of our sponsor PCBWay, we're stepping things up massively. We're redoing some parts of last year's show, scaling up other parts, and expanding the show across the road too. And I'm gonna be sharing it all with you guys, including some little projects you can add to your own yard in time for Christmas. For this first video, we're working on a Christmas light show staple, the mini tree. Mini trees, as they seem to have become known, form a pretty important part of most Christmas light shows I've seen. They add some nice depth to the show and allow for some really awesome effects. The trees we built for last year used a laser cut plywood base and 3D printed joiners that accepted a standard irrigation riser as the center post. This worked great, except the heat made my toppers get a little bit soft. Somehow I forgot how hot Christmas gets in Australia. They survived long enough to see out the 2024 season, but I'd already started thinking about how to improve them and solve a bunch of the issues we encountered with them along the way. Obviously, issue number one is the melting prints, but they were also really painful to assemble, requiring a bunch of wire-to-wire -wire soldering, which is the worst. These trees are wired in a zigzag pattern. Starting at the bottom left, we go up to the topper, then down to the base, then up, then down, and so on. So we have a constant string of pixels for the whole tree. Every tree would have 84 individual wire-to-wire -wire solder joints that are prone to water ingress and other types of failures. My idea to solve this was to replace the topper with a PCB. PCBs are made from essentially fiberglass, which is weatherproof, and we can use the PCB for carrying power and signals between the strings instead of having to join wires together. It doesn't technically reduce the solder joints required, but if you've done any soldering, you'd know that joining wires to solder pads is worlds faster and easier than wire to wire. The next problem is the base of the tree. The plywood worked, but it's not really weatherproof. And when we had some rain over Christmas last year, the plywood soaked up some of that 
and when it got hot again, it bananaed like crazy. The more I thought about it, the more I wanted to make the bottom of the tree a PCB as well as the top. Instead of having to solder wire to wire, I just solder each LED string in the top and in the bottom. But that would be a massive PCB, way bigger than I've ever brought before. Fortunately for the sponsor of this project, PCBWay, this is easy. So I put together my design and sent them to my friends at PCBWay to make. I've been using PCBWay for years now. Their service and products have always been high quality and my mini tree PCBs are no different. The online ordering process is a breeze. You just upload your Gerber file, select from a range of options, including copper weight, silk screen colors, materials, and more, then hit submit. Their engineers will confirm everything and let you know if there are any issues. I made a mistake and left a placeholder measurement on one of the copper layers on these PCBs and they reached out proactively and double checked it wasn't supposed to be there before deleting it for me. Once your PCB has been manufactured, they'll ship it straight to your door. They also have 3D printing and CNC machining services, so no matter what your project calls for, they can help expand your possibilities for a reasonable price and it's always faster than I'm expecting. Find out more about PCBWay at the link in the video description and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this series. After waiting a little while, I got a nice big box from PCBWay. Some of these are for some other Christmas projects, so get subscribed if you don't wanna miss those, but what we're interested in right now are my mini tree PCBs. They came up incredibly well. The PCB has pads for 14 strings of seed pixels and with 25mm pixels and a 600mm riser, each tree will have just shy of 400 pixels on it. Which, for those of you who know what I'm talking about, means you can run two trees off of one pixel port. The PCBs come as one piece with the topper inside the bottom PCB. To remove it, you can just push it back and forth till it comes free of the base. The top and bottom PCB both have a positive and ground bus to ensure consistent brightness over the whole tree. So you shouldn't need to have power injection midway along even if you're using five volt seed pixels. They include pads and zip tie strain relief holes for your waterproof connector pigtails on the input and the output side so you can connect it to your controller of choice. I cut all my strings to length carefully and then stripped and tinned them all. This is a slog, so I put on some music, set up my fume extractor, and settled in for a little while. There are these neat little cutout slots on both PCBs that allow us to snake our wires through to add some strain relief and make sure we're not tensioning against our solder joints directly. One by one, I soldered all the strings in alternating directions so our data could flow freely to the top bar and then back down, and did the same thing with the base. Once the tree was assembled and tested, I used some liquid or brush-on electrical tape to make all the connections and exposed copper waterproof. Now that I've solved the wire joining issue, I needed to solve a couple more problems with last year's trees. I liked the irrigation riser for our center posts. They're cheap, strong, and are really easy to get a hold of. We'd still need to attach them somehow, so we're using some ASA 3D prints this time around, which will stand up to the summer heat fine. I designed a 3D print that would screw onto the base PCB with some M3 screws and has an internal printed thread to receive the riser. The top is a little more complicated than the base, but for good reason. As these strings of pixels stretch slightly, they'll get a little bit loose over time and you don't want a floppy tree. So I wanted to build in a way to adjust the distance between the top and bottom PCBs to tension the strings of LEDs. I tried adding a spring mechanism that would keep some constant tension on all the strings. I thought about trying to add a screw tensioning system, but what I ultimately decided on was to use the threads of the riser to adjust our tension. The tighter you screw in the riser to the top and bottom 3D prints, the shorter your tree is gonna be, right? So to allow us to loosen the riser on either end while keeping our strings aligned, I designed this topper that'll allow the top to rotate independent of the bottom. The whole thing prints as one piece and locks into place with a set screw. So to tension your LED strings, 
You just need to loosen the set screw and unscrew the riser a little bit from either the top or bottom 3D print. Then make sure you're properly aligned and tighten down the set screw again. It's a little bit difficult to explain how it works, but hopefully it makes sense to you. In essence, this just means we don't need extra parts and we can tension our strings with about 15 millimeters of travel. There's a kit available in the Stockpot store with the PCB and all the hardware you need, and it's even available with the prints if you need them as well. We're doing one run in time for Christmas and there's a very limited number of kits with prints available. So if you're interested, get in quick. This year, the 3D prints were done with ASA instead of PETG, which I used last year. This will stand up to the summer heat without any issues and was made possible by my Prusa Core 1s, which are enclosed. To print materials like ASA without extreme warping, you need to ensure that you have a consistent enclosure temperature and the Core 1 manages that just fine. If you have a material like ASA or ABS selected, the Core 1 will even preheat itself before starting the print, so you don't have to worry about preheating before kicking off your print. Everything is set up to suit 27, 25 millimeter pixels per strings exactly. I did find that some of the pixels had slight differences in spacing, so if you're making one of these, try and use pixels from the same batch for each tree. I've also included some shims you can print if your pixel spacing is different from mine and you need to adjust the spacing between the topper and the base. These trees are way easier to assemble than a lot of other solutions I've seen, including my own trees from last year. And I've done my best to make them accessible to anyone with some basic soldering knowledge and a printer. Again, if you'd like to make your own, I've got a limited run of PCBs and prints available for pre-order through the website. And there's a full tutorial video over on the saucepan to help you assemble your own. If you're not going down the full-blown Christmas light show route, even a $20 WLED controller can drive this tree. And with some pixel mapping, you can do some really cool effects and make a great dynamic lawn ornament. For our Christmas display, I needed seven trees. So I settled in with a podcast and assembled them all in a day. Then I just had to give them all a quick test. I wish I'd thought of this solution sooner. They look so much cleaner than last year's trees. They're easier to tension and they took so much less time to put together. They should last many years and will provide a really great core feature for this year's show. Speaking of which, if you're in the Melbourne area and you'd like to join us for the opening night of this year's light display on the 29th of November, head to the link in the video description to find the details. There'll be a casual free sausage sizzle at the park across the road before the show kicks off in the evening. Everyone is welcome, young and old, so if you can make it, I'd love to see you there. And thanks to the guys at Prusa, we'll be giving away a Prusa Mark IV S to whoever finds me and tells me about an awesome project they'd use the printer for. I'll pick my favorite and you can take home your brand new printer. I'll also have a couple of runner-up prizes and stockpot project kits to give away, so make sure to come say hi. If you can't make it, the show will be running all the way to the new year, so you'll be able to check it out anytime. This year's show should really be something, but these trees alone are not much of a level up from last year. We're just kind of fixing an issue we discovered. But we do have some plans for a bigger, more exciting prop to add to this year's show. Much, much bigger. If you don't wanna miss that, get subscribed. If you like this video, leave it a like. If not, let me know why. Thanks a bunch for watching. I'll catch you next time.